Thorchain is definitely one of the most interesting ecosystems across DeFi. And in this video, we are going to dive into the multiple yield farming options they do provide to users. Welcome back on the channel, guys. If you're looking to learn more about crypto on ramping, off ramping and options to yield farm on, this is the channel for you. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. That being said, let's jump into today's topic, Thorchain. Ranking here 24th on DeFi Lama when it comes to TVL. This protocol doesn't get the attention that it deserves because I think their yields are much lower than we can find on other, for example, Ethereum layer 2s. But at the same time, Thorchain has a lot of things going for them and mainly the, the fact that we can use crypto in its native state. So we can get yield on pure Bitcoin, not a derivative, not a wrapped version, nothing as such. And the same goes for all of the other cryptocurrencies that they do support. And as you can see for the past month, they went up 13% in TVL, which is very interesting. Maybe something is cooking. So let's order this out by volume. And the volume for the past 24 hours is at around $126 million. It's above that, a little bit above that actually. But you can see that just because of it, Thorchain now is ranking 9th. So they are definitely on the top 10 of the most active chains when it comes to volume for the past 24 hours. And also what I like about it is that they are incredibly accessible even for complete beginners to the DeFi space and to crypto even. Now let's take a quick look at the Thor chain ecosystem report for Q3 2024. So this just wrapped up. And under the summary, you can see that they did add a new feature for yield farmers. So now there's rune pools. We'll touch on that later on in the video. But this is another way users can earn yield on Thorchain. Another exciting addition to what they are developing currently on Thorchain is that they added an app layer that removes risk from the base layer of the network, allowing new teams to deploy smart contracts, tapping into Thorchain's liquidity. This is something very interesting because definitely it will help to attract development teams and with more offer of new protocols, there will be definitely new yield opportunities on chain and that will attract not only more liquidity, but also more users to the network. And on top of that, the main focus also from the development teams on Thorchain are also working on base and Solana chain integrations. Again, this is extremely bullish. Those are a couple of the most active blockchains, the most volume heavy, the most deep liquidity chains out there. So overall, all of this put together translates into a growing ecosystem for Thorchain. So definitely, I think it's a great opportunity to start interacting with this ecosystem right now, because if things go well, we will definitely see a pump into the TVL and probably also with the main token of the network, which is Rune. So bullish times ahead for Thorchain, in my opinion. A quick look at the Q3 2024 metrics shows us a total USD volume of over $8.1 billion and the highest 24 hour volume stands at $284 million. Total liquidity has seen an increase of over 12%. It went from 259 million to 289 million. Liquidity fees collected also accrue for 6.37 million. Overall, we can also see that the block rewards bring more earnings to users versus pure liquidity fees. And here on the chart, that's easily to assess. Liquidity fees will mostly depend on volume and block rewards are pretty much keeping themselves very stable through time. As long as there are on-chain activities going on, block rewards will cash in, while liquidity fees only when people swap the assets on Thor chain. The top five swap routes by USD volume, they are led by Bitcoin with Ethereum. So this is definitely something you might want to take a look at. The two biggest assets in crypto, the two biggest market caps. So it's no surprise. Then we have Bitcoin and Rune. Bitcoin and the stablecoin USDT, Ethereum and Rune, and Ethereum and the stablecoin. So among all of these four different tokens, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Rune, and USDT, incredible options because they are, after all, the top five swap routes by USD volume. 
but leading the pack by far is the swap in between Bitcoin and Ethereum. Then the top five swap routes that generated the most fees, again, led by Bitcoin and Ethereum. Then we have Bitcoin and Rune, Bitcoin USDT, Ethereum and Rune, and then lastly, USDT and Rune. Let's finish up the lookout for their Medium article here with the Rune pool. They launched, created a new way to provide liquidity with Rune, and therefore you will earn a Rune yield if you deposit into these pools. This is a feature which is still on beta, but more improvements are to be made. And if you want to keep on reading about their Medium article, check the description. I'll leave a link for you to check it out. Let's check the opportunities for yield farming here on ThorSwap. So for that, we'll go on to the Earn section. And the cool thing about ThorChain is that they have some more risky options and less risky options as all. But they are probably the one chain that has what they call savers vaults. So that will allow you to earn, for example, yield on, on your Bitcoin without having to face the risk of impermanent loss. All of the options that you deposit with savers vaults, and that's not only something you can do with Bitcoin, but also with other assets on ThorChain, you will earn an APR paid pu purely on the native token that you are depositing. So it's an APR of 1.77% for Bitcoin, which is well above average. Let me tell you, I see many times yields of, for example, a Bitcoin derivative, which is far under 1%. So this makes it for a very, very good option, in my opinion. They have a ton of blue chip assets here. If you keep scrolling down the list, there's more for you to see. Litecoin, this percentage icon, for example, that you see here with Bitcoin, 62% means that the total allocation for Bitcoin into this vault is right now filled at 62%. If it reaches 100%, no more deposits will be allowed. So this is the lower end of the risk spectrum here on ThorSwap, but also of the risk level. So let's go on to liquidity because liquidity pools are the ones that will give you the more return for your investment. But of course, they will also be very much risky. When you deposit here on ThorSwap's liquidity pools, you'll have three main options. You can deposit the native asset, in the case Bitcoin, if you want to select another you just go here on the list and you select from the list. Also, if you do it this way, know that your Bitcoin will be rebalanced upon entering the pool. So you'll always have that 50-50 exposure. Half of your Bitcoin will be turned into Rune. Then you also have the other option, which is basically doing it manually, putting 50-50% of your assets, both in the shape of Bitcoin or Rune. And Rune will always be something you need to have into their liquidity pools. It doesn't work like the other chains where you have multiple, sometimes dozens, if not more, of liquidity pairs to choose from. In here, you will always have the native asset paired with their native token, which is Rune. And then you can also go with the route of adding purely Rune. And this goes the same way that we just saw with the native asset initially with Bitcoin. So when you deposit using the Rune selected here, you'll still have that 50-50 exposure. You don't have to swap things altogether before depositing into the pool. You can come here with a single asset and they, they will do the trade for you on the back end. You can also use the prices and pool share to get an understanding of how much your deposit would be representing in the share of the pool. So here with 10 Bitcoin, you see the share of the pool would be 0.63%. There would be a fee for deposit and also the, the prices of Bitcoin per rune because five of these 10 Bitcoins would be sold and buying into the rune token. And last but not least, the feature we already touched upon briefly in the beginning of the video, the rune pool. This is a different one. It's not the, quite the same thing as the savers vault, although you just deposit rune here. And bear in mind, you'll have a minimum lockup period of 30 days. But the rune that you deposit here will be provided to specific liquidity pools. So you will definitely experience impermanent loss here, although not as high as with the traditional liquidity pools. It's probably going to be an average of the impermanent loss being experienced in the all specter of ThorSwap's liquidity pools. 
So definitely another option for you to earn yield on your rune tokens, although here with a lockup period of 30 days. And this is why I think Thor Swap is an extremely beginner friendly option. Everything is here on one screen, all the yield options, everything you can do with your native assets is simply accessible to you through these screens. And if you want to check out the yields being paid on ThorChain, you can come here to thorchain.org slash yield. Currently, Rune is priced at $5.2 per token. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll have all the APRs listed here. So you get everything from the pool APR, from the liquidity pool, when you pair Rune with Bitcoin. And also the savers APR when you deposit Bitcoin singly into the savers vault. All of the APRs shown here are an average for the past 30 days and they will be annualized. So for example, for depositing Bitcoin and Rune into the liquidity pools with this average, it would mean that by the end of one whole year, you'd be earning 22.56% on your deposit. If you went to the savers APR to be covered from impermanent loss while being exposed single-handedly just to Bitcoin, you would be earning 1.71% a year. And they have all the major ones here. There's Bitcoin, Ethereum, stablecoins also, USDC and USDT. Really high yields for especially USDT, the stablecoins. Even on the single-sided option with the savers APR, it's two digits on a stablecoin, probably because of all the FUD that USDT generally faces. But again, really, really high yields here. Also options for BNB, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin and Doge. Also AVAX and Atom. Another extremely interesting feature they have in their ecosystem is their Thor Wallet app, which will allow you to manage everything on the go actually. Right now on screen, this is how the Thor Wallet app looks like. And if you watched my last video on the Thor chain ecosystem, you see that they have their own card. And in order for you to get that card, you need to do have this app and you can get the card for free. It will give you access to a digital Visa card, your personal IBAN or bank account ID. There's going to be no monthly or annual fees. So this is extremely competitive. Most banks do charge you a monthly or annual fee. And there's going to be also a sign up bonus of up to 25 ARB tokens. If you want to check that out, I did already a video on the Thor card and I will also have an affiliate link for you to follow because it will give you a 5% discount on your crypto fees when using the card. Let me just also quick mention the borrowing tab here. You can borrow ETH or Bitcoin, but currently the cap is reached. All of the liquidity available for users to borrow has been reached. And this is a feature which I highly anticipate to, to see more news about it if they will increase the cap. But looking at the competitive features they were handing users, that's probably not something to be seen. We'll just have to wait out and see. But overall, these borrows would be 0% interest. That's why they were so competitive and the cap was reached extremely fast after this was made available. Okay guys, this is what I had for you about yield farming with ThorChain. Definitely great options here, especially when it comes to pure yield on native Bitcoin. Probably in the future, I'll be bringing more content about ThorChain because I think this is somewhat of an overlooked blockchain. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about it. If you enjoy this type of content, like and subscribe guys. Thank you for watching. Useful links in the description. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.